let's talk about mental health in iOS 17. In iOS 17, Apple has introduced a few features to try to help with mental health. The first thing they've added is a mood tracker. It has the option to notify you and remind you to track your mood. I believe the default is twice a day. So let's track my mood. Reflect on how I'm feeling. Take a second to log how you're feeling in this moment. So I get to pick between logging an emotion or a mood. Like, is this how I'm feeling right now or is this how I felt overall today? We're going to log how I feel right now. I feel fine. It's something to watch out for when you're doing this that it could end up looking like you're very negative all the time. And, and maybe you do have a negative mood all the time and that's why you're tracking it. But um, the way our brains formulated, and this is an evolutionary survival mechanism, we don't always notice when things are good. We're more likely to notice when things are bad. It's just something to keep an eye on if you're looking back at your history overall. I will be pleasant, and that's just the scale, is you pick between very unpleasant or neutral or slightly pleasant, pleasant, very pleasant. So hopefully you can handle the word pleasant. It just has these different colors assigned to it. It says, what best describes this feeling? So here are some different words that they're suggesting. You can look at more of them. Of course, then they're gonna be all of them, I think. I'll say satisfied, cause I'm making things? I don't know. What's having the biggest impact on you? And it asks for you to assign something. Here's the problem. People are not that great at assigning why we feel a way. Sometimes it's really obvious, like something very large has happened, but sometimes there are other factors. <laughs> uh, for example, um, I had an ex say to me one time, by the way, this is, I'm living in the Pacific Northwest where we have seasonal affective disorder and it's pretty serious. He said, by the way, I noticed that you always seem to bring up relationship issues that have been concerning you a couple hours before sunset. And in fact, a couple hours before sunset, up through sunset, is the time that seasonal affective disorder affects me the worst. That doesn't mean we didn't have anything in our relationship that needed discussing, but it bothered me at that time. And so what, which one actually caused the unpleasant feeling? And, and is it ever just one thing? Don't feel the need to answer if you don't know. Humans are very, very good at coming up with reasons why we are feeling a particular way or doing a particular thing. And they are partial answers at best. There are many of our actions that unfortunately we don't really know why we're doing it. There are these different studies where people will come up with explanations for things even if we don't have them. The risk in answering this if you are not sure is it reinforces that cause and makes us less open to exploring more options. Whether or not they implement this right away or it's a feature down the road, one of the potentially cool things about tracking your mood in health is seeing correlations. You know, maybe around the same time, I get a notification that my mood has been worse and a notification that my exercise has been worse, for example. That doesn't mean there's nothing else happening in my life that could theoretically attribute it, but maybe I'd be feeling better if I were doing more exercise. So watch out for this attribution because it could stop you from learning something that could be really helpful. So I am not going to attribute <laughs> why I'm feeling this way and hit done. And it's been logged. Before you set up this mood tracker to notify you twice a day, keep in mind if you're somebody who gets overwhelmed with notifications, make sure you know why you are logging it and that it is a high enough priority for you right now to take on that extra burden of a notification or another thing to do. The last thing you want is for the thing tracking your mood to be causing you to have a slightly worse mood. Here's the section of the health app where you're going to find the mental well-being section. It's gonna be right here over in the browse section on the right. And you can see these different factors and they've included things like your exercise minutes, how much sleep you've gotten, because of course those can contribute to our mood. Here it says anxiety risk and depression risk. They offer a screening inventory. Here's a clip of me taking this inventory earlier. Don't worry, I'm fine. I tried to answer truthfully and I'm pregnant. So I don't have as much energy or as much interest in exploring extracurricular activities as I often do. And those things are often symptoms of mild depression. In this case, the screening tool did not deliver an accurate report, but in isolation, those symptoms could mean 
that I was at some risk for mild depression. Definitely don't let a tool trying to let you know if you might have anxiety cause you anxiety, but it might be worth looking into. It's just a screening tool. It lets you know there might be an issue. Your watch cannot diagnose you with AFib, but it can say, hey, maybe go talk to your doctor about AFib. Maybe it's time to go look into another thing. It might be worth trying it out. And of course, if anything yields positive and you think you should look more into it, that would be the time to schedule an appointment with a doctor or therapist. And the final mental health feature of iOS 17 is the journal app, which as I'm recording this doesn't come out until later this year. It hasn't even been part of the beta yet. I am personally looking forward to it, but we'll have to cover it in another video. Hopefully these will help you set off on a path towards better mental health. All right, what do you think? Uh, do you like these new features in iOS 17? Are they the kind of thing you might use or might not? And why? Let me know in the comments.